today on Aqua Kids. Head out with the Aqua Kids as they excavate a terrapin nest, analyze its eggs in a lab, and even catch an adult terrapin. So, ready to make a difference? Building a better planet starts with you. Hey everyone at home, and welcome to another great episode of Aqua Kids. I'm Drew. And I'm Katie. On today's episode, we get to work with one of my favorite animals, turtles. Diamondback terrapins are native to New Jersey, but unfortunately in the past few years, their populations and habitat have decreased significantly, landing them a spot on the endangered species list. Luckily, however, there is some hope. We're going to go meet up with researchers from Project Terrapin to find out more. All right, let's head out. Diamondback terrapins are just one of the endangered species calling the Barnegat Bay home. But luckily, a project run by the Marine Academy of Technology and Environmental Science helps to not only protect the turtles, but also to restore their habitat. So the female came up a little after 10 a.m. today, so we're going to go over and measure the eggs and relocate the nest. Why would a terrapin come all the way up here to lay eggs? This is a part of their nesting habitat, and even though we have like houses or structure, and there's a lot of vegetation here, there's also this area that historically has been their nesting area. So they'll find the most suitable nesting material and try to try to nest. So do the terrapins prefer one material to lay their eggs in over another? Yeah, they generally prefer sand mm -hmm. and anything that has some kind of composition with sand. So, so it's easy to dig particle. and stuff. Exactly, it's a lot easier to dig, and historically they're they're found here in estuaries along Barrier Islands. And that's the kind of soil you're going to find is predominantly sand. So what we do is we just gently excavate mm -hmm. the surface here, if you want to sure. see what we're doing. Yeah, go ahead. You could gently move some of that soil away, and then I'll go down and find some of the eggs that are down in there. So how far deep do the females usually bury their eggs? Yeah, in, our, in here, we usually have females that dig, you know, at Sedge Island, usually a few inches deep, all the way down to about six inches deep, but no deeper around here, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the deepest nests we find are usually about six or seven inches at best. So, feeling the eggs, I notice they're kind of like pliable, like not very squishy, but like I can still like kind of like feel through them. And do you know like the exact reason for this? Is it just because they're like kind of reptilian in a way? Yeah, they, they are reptiles and mm -hmm. they store the eggs in their body cavity and when they have to pass out of their body cavity, they have to go through a small like ovipositor in the back end of the turtle or they call it cloacal opening area. And the, tur and the eggs are actually able to be squeezed through that opening and then able to kind of fill up again and then back down in the nest cavity. And they do a really efficient job in packing the eggs within the nest cavity. So in that small space, they can get a you know, relatively decent number of eggs in there. So now that we found the eggs, why don't we get them out of here? Sure, we could actually pull the eggs out of the nest, put them in our container, uh, do some measurements and relocate them. So let's start. So we just pull them out like that, put them right in the container. And then what we do is we uh, excavate a little bit more. And then, yep, pull them out, that's it. There you go, good job. Doing a good job. Yeah, we're also going to take nest depth here because it's really important to find out how deep the eggs are. Um, this is about 15 to 16 centimeters in depth. Uh, the depth of the eggs is important because the deeper you go in a nest, the cooler the temperatures are. And if the temperatures are a little below, like 82 degrees Fahrenheit or around 29 Celsius, you'd have more male development in terms of the eggs. And then if the temperature is above that, you'd end up getting more females. Wait. So temperature determines the sex of the egg? Yes, that's a, that happens in a lot of turtle species. It's an amazing, it's an amazing factor because uh, the environment really dictates what the gender is going to be of the species. So if they're in more open areas, um, there's a good probability that the sun's going to heat the soil up a little bit more and you probably get more females. If they're in a little more shaded areas or even closer to the water, there's a good chance that you can get males. In the end, it's supposed to balance out overall where you have males to females, but in this species, uh, females are very important, not to say males aren't, because the females are the ones that produce the eggs. Right. So in an area like this, where it's more open, warms up a little bit more, there might be a better chance that we can get more females to the environment. And as long as there's a, a decent amount of males out there that can fertilize the females, the species will be able to sustain itself. It was really cool to see the terrapin nest. Yeah. 
Who knew that the gender of the eggs was determined by the temperature of the environment? Seriously, don't go away. When Aqua Kids returns, we get to take the measurements of the eggs. Aqua Kids presents another Aqua Kids pop quiz. Diamondback terrapins are very common along the east coast of North America. How long do you think a diamondback terrapin's lifespan is? Is it A, 5 to 10 years, B, 25 to 40 years, or C, over 60 years? I'll be back with the answer after the break. Did you figure out how long a diamondback terrapin's lifespan is? The answer is B, 25 to 40 years. The average lifespan for other types of terrapin is 15 to 20 years. The diamondback terrapin is believed to be the only turtle in the world that lives exclusively in brackish water. Welcome back. Let's head over to Sedge Island to take some measurements of the turtles. All right. We're going to be bringing the eggs over to our assistants, Emily and Megan, and we're going to be taking our measurements here in the lab. Katie and uh, Selena, thanks for joining us here in the lab. Uh, we're going to measure these eggs now so that we can get the length of the egg, the width of the egg, and also um, the weight of the eggs. It's important because we want to match the uh, production or the output of the egg for each individual female that we have coming up on the island. So we, right. so we simply do, do the, do? yeah, we simply do the length like this using this caliper. Okay. And we record that on our data sheet, of course. And then we do the width this way. Okay. And then we have this balance, which is shut off, that we can actually put it on here and do the weight yep, oh. of the eggs. And what's the point of recording all this information? Well, we know that individual females that come up every year, and if we could see a pattern in the uh, size of the eggs and also in the weight of the eggs that they produce every year, it could tell us about the resources that are out because they need those resources to use as energy to produce eggs. Cool, and, and do you have any programs in place that if you see a problem, you can try and fix it? Exactly. Well, a couple of things that could happen is that you could have a major disturbance like we had um, Sandy that hit us, right. uh, post-tropical yeah, cyclone Sandy. And we're really assessing what's going on after, after that season in terms of nesting seasons, in terms of like the output of eggs. You know, are the eggs getting smaller in some females? Are they getting lighter? It could be a result of change in resources that are available after the storm. So can we get started? Sure. I'm going to give you the caliper now. All right. And then what we'll do is we'll pass, pass the egg over to you, and then you could actually start taking the measurements. So how do you do it? You yep. just click? Just, uh, all you have to do is just slide this open. Oh. And then you can get that. Yep, you got it. Right there. You have to be very gentle. Be very gentle, but just when it just about closes on there, that, that's good enough. 32. Okay, and then what I do is record it. Okay. And then we could do the uh, width. The width. Mm -hmm. And that's fine right there, that's good. 22.6. Excellent, and then we'll just put it right on the balance. It's kind of nice, it has a dimple in it too, so the eggs can kind of just stay put <laughs> in there. Yeah. And 8.6. After we finished measuring and weighing the eggs, they were then transferred over to the nursery, where they would be given the chance to mature before being released into the wild. Recently, Mira even got the chance to release a few of the hatchlings. Hey guys, I'm here at Island Beach State Park, New Jersey, and we're about to watch some terrapin hatchlings being released. Let's take a look. The turtles that we have here are throughout the course of the school year. Oh, that's this one. You got them. And um, these are part of what we call a Head Start program. A lot of you got that overview. This group that we have here, we have smaller turtles because we held back some of the turtles that we normally would give to schools because we felt they weren't growing well or eating well initially. So they do grow at different rates. Um, some of them may have some developmental issues that we don't know about. So what we do is we hold on to them and then we have Taylor, and Taylor here, and Dylan, they're part of Project Terrapin, the school initiative. Uh, Taylor, Taylor and Brittany, who's another part of their trio, not here today. They have been raising the hatchlings and in charge of the hatchling care for, for years now. The juniors at Nate's and they're really responsible for getting them to this point. So we wouldn't be here today without their efforts and giving the extra attention to these smaller ones that we didn't know if, you know we could get out here or not. So we did a great job. Hey. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna release them back to the habitat, and this is the habitat in which their mom deposited the eggs and they hatch from in this environment right here. So this is the Sedge Island Natural Resource Conservation Area, which is part of Island Beach State Park, and an area where they came from was an area that's managed by Fish and Wildlife. It's a, it's a popular nesting site. Okay, right, we're ready. Okay, here we go. If you have a turtle, can you just come out in the water a little bit? Just walk out to us. let them go. Um, as they swim away, just keep your eye on them because they're going to come up for air and then you can watch them swimming around. Three, two, one. 
Can you guys briefly explain the Project Terrapin program? Yeah, Project Terrapin uh, program is a group that we run at our school. We go to the Mates Academy in Manahawkin, and it's a program that basically focuses on the conservation of the northern diamondback terrapin. We take care of terrapin at our school. We have a bunch of different tanks throughout our school, um, and kids can volunteer to feed them and clean their tanks during lunch. Why is this project so important? Well, um, northern diamondback terrapins are very special to their in our environment. Um, they're unique as they're some of the only turtles that live in the water and on the land. But recent in recent years, they have been a species of concern, meaning that their populations have been going down due to just poaching and um, bycatch reduction and stuff like that. Through this program, we're really able to um, help conserve the species. Um, by us taking care of them for the first year, it helps us to give them like a strong basis and once we release them into the wild, they have a better chance of survival. So what brought you guys here today? Uh, we came for the turtle release. We heard about it online and decided to come and check it out with the kids. And it's a great thing the kids are doing. I'm, I, I, I like to see more of it. There's plenty of turtles. The way they're raising them and release them into the wild again, get back our uh, ecosystem. I think it's great. It was great to see that Dr. Winnick and his team are assessing terrapin populations throughout Barnegat Bay. That's right. Not only that, but it was also cool to see the efforts that local high school students are making to sustain the species. Aqua Kids will be right back. Aqua Kids salutes aqua heroes, people working hard to keep the planet green and blue. Steve and Sarah Melanowski are founders of the Fishers Island Oyster Farm in Fishers Island, New York. For over 30 years, Fishers Island has been directly supplying oysters to consumers and oyster seed to many other oyster growers in the Northeast. The oysters from Fishers Island are sustainably raised off the bottom of brackish water ponds and nets just below the surface of the water. The combination of high salinity and cool water temperature from Block Island Sound gives these oysters a great taste and a unique deep shell. This technique is not only beneficial to the oysters and consumers, but a great advantage to the environment as well. In addition, 1% of all Fishers Island oyster farm sales go toward protecting open space on Fishers Island and restoring oyster reefs in New York Harbor. Welcome back to Aqua Kids. We're relocating to the Barnegat Bay Lighthouse Center to learn more about terrapins. So if you guys remember, about a month ago I did a turtle release and sure enough these are actually one of the turtles that we released and it was found not too long ago. Yeah, this is a, a hatchling released uh, once again like you said a month ago and it's grown a little bit. During the uh, growth season or the summer season when it's warmer, they can grow about an inch or so. And this really? one made its way a little over a mile uh, back to one of the islands that we were, which was the original place where it was hatched. That's crazy, yeah, he got so much bigger. Yeah. They were like this big last time we saw them. Yep, it's, uh, the resources are out there and they're available. They'll take advantage of that and they'll, and they'll grow. It's Terrapin time here at the Lighthouse Center. We're gonna go check for Terrapins in our traps. All right. There you go. Sure. Oh, we got one. Yep, we got that. <gasps> oh my goodness, she's so cute. Wait, so it's a she? Yeah, it's a, it's a girl. Uh, oh. Females are generally bigger than the males, and she's pretty much on the high end of the size range that we have uh, here. She still looks small, though. Yeah, uh, terrapins are, I would say, a mid-size animal. Um, once again, that's, that's as big as a female would get. Males would be about a third of that size. And why is that? It's because um, she needs to carry the eggs. And also at that size too, she's gonna have a, a fewer predators. So how many turtles do you expect to find in here? Yeah, we usually, we usually hope to get at least one, but uh, many times we could have over 30 turtles in one of these hoop traps. Wow. So what do we do next? Uh, we're gonna close uh, up or fold up the trap and then we're gonna open the trap up to go get the turtle out of it and then do our measurements. So All see right. if she was actually okay. previously caught. Let's do it. She's already trying to get out. Look at her. <laughs> okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide um, the sliders down on the poles so that we can take the poles off and collapse the trap to make it easier to get the turtle out. All right, let's okay. do it. Oh, you can just pull it right out. Yep, Oops. pull it right out. Yep. Yep. There you go. And then these hooks come right off the back end. 
So I want you to just take it with your two hands, one on each side, and just grab her from the back side. All right, Barbie, I'm getting you out of here. <laughs> Barbie? Yeah, you know, for Barnegat Bay. Oh, 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 she's stuck, she's stuck. I'm sorry. Oh, ow, your nails hurt. <laughs> Barbie's a fighter. Barbie's long she's nails. a fighter. All right, where do we take her? Okay, we're gonna take her over oh, to, uh, She's trying to, to fly. Our, our workbench where we'll get some measurements on it. All right, All right. let's go. We'll find out if we caught her before or not. All right, Barbie, don't hurt me. I'm your friend. You wanna say hi, Barbie? I'll say hi to Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Look at her, she's so happy. She's like, she's. <laughs> so we'll put her down right here. All right. We're gonna check for a code um, with, using a, with a microchip that may have been inserted in her in the past. We call those pit tags. And all you have to do is just hold it up to her and hit read, and you'll hear a beep. There you go. Oh. And then she has a unique co code that's over there. Oh, oh wow. wow. So she has digits. a pit tag? Mm hmm She has a pit tag. Interesting. Where so is the pit tag? Uh, the pit tag is inserted in her body cavity. Oh, wow. How do so you it's do that? right under that. Uh, we have an injector that oh, we yeah. use Does to it insert it. So, um, no, they actually, actually, it's very quick, and there's really no uh, kind of response in terms of them having any kind of like pain or injury. It's actually very quick. It's almost like us getting an inoculation. Oh. Wow. And uh, in almost all cases, we we not even draw on a drop of blood, which works well. And we have a pretty high recapture rate, so we know that it's not really affecting them in any way. So it's like a checkpoint. They just come through and you can find out where they've been. Yep, exactly. Yep, you could even have some yep, detectors. Mm. So if they go through a certain area, you can kind of pick up on their code. All right, well, why don't we take some measurements? Sure, let's do that. We have uh, a caliper here. It's actually a tree caliper, but it works really well. Where you can get like oh, the wow. length of the turtle, the width of the turtle. Do you just get the, the shell, shell or, like, the head to the tail? Or the... Uh, we got this shell. We're okay. dealing mostly with the, the top of the shell, the carapace, and this bottom part of the shell called the plastron. Okay. All right. You so need we have you do that. Absolutely. More the better. If you, if you want to help out with Are that. Are we doing sure. length first? Yeah. Let's do the length. All right. There you go. Uh oh, her head. <laughs> Careful, Barbie. All right. Looks like we got. There we go. Hang on. Yeah it's, in, yeah, it's in centimeters. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's in centimeters. That's 20. a 20, exactly. Yeah. 20 so, exactly. Yep, 20 wow, centimeters. Wow, you're or, a big one. Then we could do the, do the length. All right. That one is uh, just over 15. Yeah. Okay. So we call it, yeah. Do you round? Or yeah, just... I kind of move them over to millimeters as well. So, wow. so we'll say 151. And then we could do the plastron length, the bottom shell length. All right. To do that. We doing uh, that? Yep, you got it. This? Yep, right. right into the little notch back there. All right, that looks about 19. Yep. Okay. And then finally, we do the height, which is the thickness of the shell. That's important for us too, especially since they carry eggs, and it determines kind of the eight exactly amount of body, body cavity. So are these measurements normal for a turtle of her age? Yeah, for her for her age as a reproductive female, she's that's a pretty normal size here. This Barnicut Bay uh, area. See, well, I think we should probably get her back in the yeah. water. She doesn't yeah. look too happy. Yeah, let's get her back. Okay, so we'll release them right over here. We'll just lean over this walled area. Oh, she's ready to go. She oh, yeah, look at so she's in the swimming go. mode already. Go home. Whoa, there she goes. Hi, Barbie. She's gone. You'll see her probably head stick up in the water at some point. Get a bearing on where she is. It was really cool to catch that diamondback terrapin. I know. Don't go away. Aqua Kids will be right back. Here's our top story. Chinese medicine imperils turtle populations. In Chinese culture, turtles are a symbol of fertility, strength, and long life, which is why it makes sense that, in traditional Chinese medicine, turtles are used to cure certain diseases. Because of this, the almost extinct Chinese three-striped, Chinese big-headed, and yellow margin box turtle are still sought after for their supposed medicinal benefits. While it may not have been a problem in the past, China's booming population, paired with a new push for traditional medicine, is causing conservationists to become concerned. If experts don't take action to prevent the extinction of these turtle species, both the turtles and the people using them for their symbolic benefits may be out of luck. I'm Katie with Aqua News, keeping you connected to our planet. Now back to Aqua Kids. Looks like we're out of time for today's show. I had a great time learning all about terrapins. From digging up a nest to catching an adult turtle, we got to see the full cycle today. That's right. And although the turtles are endangered, 
it was great to see that people like Dr. Wenick and kids from the local high school are doing what they can to help restore habitat and sustain the turtle population. Absolutely, Drew. They help us to remember that everyone can do their part to keep our planet green and blue. And so can you. So visit our website to follow us on our journey. And learn how you can come along with us so together we can keep the world and the water a great place to play and explore. And we'll see you next time on, on Aqua Kids. Kids.